Hi friends, today I want to talk about a few photos that I created recently, and when I say recently, I mean just a couple of days ago. Me and my wife took a trip to a place called St. George, which is a desert town in southern Utah. We went to a place called Coral Pink Sand Dunes, which is a state park in southern Utah, and we explored some sand dunes, as well as the town of St. George. Well, we spent like 30 seconds in the town. We, visit, we went to a gas station. I decided to dance a little bit. Sometimes the mood strikes, and... The cashier thought I was very strange for doing this. I thought I lived in America. Anyway, we uh, quickly made our way to the outskirts of St. George, came across some red rocks, took some photos there. Fun times. I will be sharing a super photo walk of this entire trip soon. I'm working through like 300 photos right now, uh, but I will be sharing that with you soon. Today, I'm going to be talking about just a few of those photos in glorious High definition Dolby Ultra 4K dynamic hyper all the marketing words definition and uh, we're going to be touching on such ideas as creating strong defined image segments as well as cutting out things to make a scene more interesting as well as putting scenes within a scene within a scene. Within a scene. Excitement. Hope you're overwhelmed with excitement. I know I am. Let me breathe after that. Ah. Okay. This is a photo of my wife taken in Coral Peak Sand Dunes State Park. In this photo, we have interesting angles in geometry. And this is represented by the pillars in the foreground, as well as the horizontal pillar, even though I know that that's not technically... A pillar, a pillar is by definition a vertical load-bearing entity, uh, but it'll work for this use. In the background, we also have the cliffs, which start on one end, go up a little bit, come back down on the other end. And it sort of has this mirroring effect to it, which I find pleasing. The pillars also act as a subframing element for the scene, and they also offer contrast and depth to the scene. From the perspective of the camera, and this is a good thing because we're looking at this scene from the perspective of the camera, very easy to visualize, okay, it's not quantum physics. Uh, from the perspective of the camera, we have three distinct layers that are strongly defined from one another. We have the foreground, which is the pillars. We have the midground, which is the sand and my wife. And then in the background, we have the cliffs and the sky. We also have three prominent color tones in this scene. We have the shadowy warm tones of the pillars and the cliff in the background. We have the bright sand, and then we have the pastel blue sky. So this photo has a strong sense of, of set-apartness to it. And I would encourage you to look, seek this out and look for this in your own compositions. Uh, the colors on my wife's clothing also provide a... Uh, provide a, a way to help grab attention for her as the subject of the scene. These are little 10% things, her pink glasses, this and that. Here's a second photo. So in this photo, I am in my hotel room, looking out the window through the curtains. I decided that I wanted to cut out a lot of the frame. I found that it would actually be a more interesting photo that way. So I crouched down and waited patiently for an interesting vehicle to come by, whether it be a car, van, bicycle, cruise ship. It was interesting. I was going to take a photo of it. And I used the curtains as a subframing element, which added a lot of interest to the photo, in my opinion. To me, it would not have been nearly as interesting without them. And the scene was beautiful. It's Utah, right? But for a photo, it was not as compelling as this scene could be, so I decided to cut a lot of it out. And the subframing, the, the use of subframing is a dramatic element itself, which adds more interest to the scene. So in this case, a small sliver of the landscape was more interesting than if I let more in. The sign in the scene, which if you look very closely, there's a sign on the right-hand side. That was originally going to be right behind whatever car came by. And I realized that, so I moved over. I did not want the sign to shoot out of the top of the car. I didn't like that clashing, so I moved it over. 
One thing I, I really enjoy about this photo as well is the sense of organicness of the cur curtain placement. It's just a little bit to the left. And I think that it's a good idea to, to not always go 100% structured in your approach to, to photos or 100% Organic. Now, you're going to certainly lean w one way or the other in your work, but it's, I, I find that it's good to strike a balance, and each scene asks for a different thing, each dynamic, each photographer. Here's the, the next photo. I, this is a photo that was taken outside of the town of St. George in a very narrow cliff. It reminded me of the, the, or the very narrow canyon. It's sort of like the canyon that you would find in the movie 127 Hours, where this guy in southern Utah fell into a canyon, the rock fell on his arm, he had to chop his arm off with a dull pocket knife, really exciting Friday evening activities, and uh, I still haven't seen the movie, which sucks, I really want to see the movie, it looks looks fantastic. I just don't take the time to sit down and watch movies, maybe I should, it's a good way to decompress. So in this case, I decided to use a sliver of natural light on my wife's face, put her in that light. And it, this offers a sense of pleasing light, as well as a sense of contrast. It focuses the image. It's, it's a hairpin sliver focus on what you're trying to get the viewer to focus on. The sliver of light also acts as a compositional element in this particular photo. In the other photos that I took there, a few of the other ones, it did not. Acted. I did not actually put it into the background of the frame. This photo is actually my favorite from the bunch, and that's one of the reasons why is I actually used it as a compositional element as much as I used it as a light source. Now, using it as a compositional element has a couple of interesting effects. One, it acts as a secondary uh, subject in the frame, where my wife is the primary one. The light or what the light reveals on the canyon wall the, the the fact that you see you see context of the scene is revealed to you of this canyon wall and what's behind her and where she is it acts as a secondary subject uh, in the the frame and it also acts as a bit of a, a subframing element if you will the, the canyon itself is interesting it's not something you would want to be rid of in the frame now, I told her to look up in this, and one of the reasons why I told her to look up is because it's a natural expression that you would make while wandering through a narrow canyon, and I did it. I'm sure she did it at one point when she first walked in, and this is a good idea to look for these things, whether you're directing a subject and you can directly direct them to do that thing, or whether you are, you are not in some sort of street photography sense. In that case, you can wait for the subject to, to create these organic expressions. But these organic ex expressions offer something a little bit differently than a pose sort of lifestyle, like this sort of thing where I'm gonna, I'm gonna feel myself type of expression would. We connect with it as humans because we, we naturally would do that in that situation. <clears throat> So I would encourage you to be intentional about looking for those things when you're when you're out and about and looking for the expressions, sort of re reverse engineering, and looking for what expressions would be good if you have a subject that you can actually talk to and direct. Another interesting thing I did in this photo was I I did one of I I, I utilized one of the best cases of subframing in my photographic career and I didn't even realize I did it until I was looking back at the photo. The canyon, the top of the canyon, is in her glasses. So it's subframing within subframing within subframing. Within subframing, I think I broke my phone. You guys see that? Do you like the angularity there? So this is a pretty intense advanced technique to pursue in your own photography. Look for ways to put scenes within scenes to create context and intrigue for your photo. But that's it. Uh, thank you so much for watching and please feel free to engage below. I'll engage back with you. Subscribe and check out my shop. That would make you super awesome. I hope you have a lovely day. Goodbye.